Humanity is really something special, don't you think? Throughout history, we've achieved so many great feats. We've crafted beautiful works of art, sailed across vast oceans, and even managed to get to the moon. Humanity has such a large capacity for goodness, but therein lies our flaw. In order for goodness to exist, so too must evil. In order for pleasure to exist, so too must pain. The anime Violet Evergarden is no stranger to suffering. Each episode focuses on the pains of others. Depression, heartache, low self-esteem, and plenty other sad states of affairs are depicted throughout the stories of each episode. But they all have something in common. Each character's struggles in some way, shape, or form all originate from a common tragedy. Loss. For one to succeed, another must fail. And when one fails at attaining what they want, in many cases, they decide to take it by force. Nowhere is this truth more evident than in the act of war, the ultimate sin of humanity. The world of Violet Evergarden finds itself at the end of a particularly brutal war, the ramifications of which are made perfectly clear by the writers of the series. Not only did Violet lose both her arms in the war, but now she spends her days typing letters for those who lost much more than her to it. One such victim is Irma Fleech, a famous opera singer in the capital city of Leiden. Tired of performing in plays depicted in the old world, Irma wishes to spark positive change with a performance relevant to the mourning of her country. The opera, starring Irma herself, is about a woman whose lover died in the war. Irma decides to hire Violet to pen the letter her character wrote for her fictitious lover, the contents of which she plans to sing at the climax of the show. Irma tells Violet that she wants this letter to be powerful. In her words, to make all women yearn and all men's hearts pound. At this point in the series, however, Violet is unable to understand the pain so many around her are going through, given that she finds emotion as a whole difficult to understand. For all her life, she was trained to be a weapon, and she became an incredibly talented soldier as a result. In such a life, though, there was no room for emotion. So when the Major, the only person who ever looked out for her, told Violet that he loved her, she didn't even know what he meant. So time and time again she tries to write this letter, but each time she fails to evoke the emotion Irma is asking of her. This raises a good question. Why doesn't Irma write the letter herself? Clearly she has a better idea of what it's meant to contain. Well, it turns out that she too is struggling to cope with the tragedies inflicted by the war. Night after night she goes to the train station hoping beyond hope that her loved one will return, but he never does and never will. Deep down, Irma is fully aware of this fact, but this awareness fails to quench her irrational hope. Even the support of her composer, Aldo, does nothing to help. Eventually, Violet learns that the heroine of the play is based on Irma herself, so she decides to follow Irma around in the hopes of understanding her point of view. Still, Irma cannot help but hold on to her irrationality, and as people often do, she tries to hide it. So when Violet tries to shadow her, Irma runs away. Upon realizing that the person most important to Violet also went missing in action, however, Irma decides to share her pain. The music builds as Irma takes Violet to a dark, empty courtyard. This place may seem insignificant, but to Irma, this collection of bricks and stones is sacred. She tells Violet that this was the first place a man named Hugo ever took her, this dark, depressing place once housed the beginning of a beautiful relationship between two young lovers. It is the location of one of Irma's fondest memories, but it's also the last place she ever saw Hugo. The score crescendos as we are transported back in time to the day Irma last gazed upon the man she loved, as he vowed to someday return to her. We are also shown the last time Hugo saw his father, none other than Irma's composer Aldo, who he also promised to come home to. Despite previously urging Irma to move on from his son's disappearance, we see here that Aldo too is unable to move past his child's death. They are both frozen in their memories of Hugo. This heartbreak is at the core of their country's current suffering, and is the very thing Irma and Aldo want to help alleviate. But without Violet's letter, they cannot. And Violet, despite her nearly identical situation, still does not understand their pain, as shown by this off-center shot at the end of this absolutely phenomenal scene. 
When Irma departs, she thanks Violet for being there for her that evening, saying that it was nice not to be alone. Violet then reflects on all Irma told her and begins to doubt her ability to write the letter Irma needs. In her own words, how can she, who knows nothing of love, write words of love? How can she, a single person, inspire an entire nation going through something she does not understand? It's here, though, that she receives help from a friend. An older delivery man shows her the countless letters sent by those who died in the war, and whose recipients also lost their lives. These letters, therefore, are all that remain of their love. This fact gives Violet the thing she desperately needs. Perspective. As survivors, we become lost without the love of those gone before us, but we often forget that they all died loving us. And these letters are evidence that their love still exists as a result. Hugo may be gone, but his love for Irma and Aldo still burns. The Major may be gone, but his love for Violet still exists within her. These countless soldiers have passed on, but they are still with us in our thoughts, in our memories, and in our hearts. Inspired, Violet once again tries to write the letter, but unlike all her previous attempts, this time she understands what is being asked of her. She can finally comprehend the constant presence these lost souls have in the hearts of the living. And as a result, the letter she writes moves Irma to tears. As Violet wrote in her letter, Love for the deceased is like looking through clear water. We can go to accept it, but when we do, it leaves just as they do. But even though we cannot see them, even though we cannot feel them, they still remain with us in our hearts and are therefore always at our sides. Knowing that Hugo is still with them, Aldo and Irma are finally ready to start moving forward. They are now prepared to help their country do the same. And Irma's spectacular performance at the opera does just that. Death is a tragic thing, yes, but at the same time it is one of the few constants of humanity. All of us, therefore, have experienced its effects in some way. So if you are struggling with the loss of a loved one, know this. We are all in this together. We can remain frozen in our pasts or we can make its impact on our lives worthwhile. We can continue to grasp what is no longer there, or we can use those experiences to help unfreeze those around us and turn this gloomy present into a bright future.